I might get in some trouble for this video, but I am not going to hide my truth. I'm not going to hide who I am. I believe very strongly in holding true and valuing who I am in order to encourage others to value who they are and to walk their walk and talk their talk and to be proud of that and to hold true to that. So as part of that, I am going to put forth into the world my thoughts and my opinions and my beliefs and anyone who maybe doesn't resonate with that or who feels very abrasive about that our energies aren't meant for one another and people who are drawn to that or who are welcoming enough to realize that not everybody needs to always agree on everything they will be drawn to my energy and, and you know vice versa so here we are and here we go and um, i have a repeat client and i'm going to be looking off to the side a bit because i have my computer here for things i'm going to be referencing i have a repeat client who sent me a few questions because she knows that i do q a's fairly frequently on my youtube channel and one of the questions that she sent me is what actually inspired me to film this video, to do this video. So let me pull it up because I should have been a bit more prepared. I was answering another email before I filmed this. <laughs> Here it is. Okay. Her question was, where do you think the religious ideas about not talking to spirit comes from? I don't agree with it, but it came from somewhere. It's a great question. And I have some philosophies on this and some opinions on this. And I want to preface, I'm not against people or in judgment of people who follow religion, who, who are religious, but not spiritual. Uh, this video is for you. If you are religious, this video is for you. If you are spiritual, it absolutely does not matter. So you can get something from this video in my opinion if you are either or if you are religious or you are spiritual this video is in no way in judgment of you if you are religious i think that whether you are religious or you are not religious you can look at this in two different frames but the facts of the matter remain unchanged it's just kind of the explanation of what's behind it would be framed differently so what i how I frame it would be like this. So a religious person on one side, a non-religious person. So they could either be um, spiritual or atheist on the other side. Um, and I think it is framed like this. For these types of people to explain why we are told not to come in with spirit by religions. I think it's, it's explained by fear on the religious side, and it's explained by control on the non-religious side under the scope of religion in general. And let me <clears throat> go further with this. So when we go to the dictation to not communicate with spirit, by religion. We need to go back to the Bible, right? That's where it originally comes from. We are told in the Bible within religion to not communicate with spirit. And then the Bible is interpreted and, you know, preached in churches and taught within religion through the interpretation of the Bible to not communicate with spirits. So we need to go back to the Bible as the base for where it comes from. So let's talk about somebody who is religious and why I feel it's framed in fear. Okay. Who was the Bible written by? That is largely debated. Even if you are a very religious person, you may have your opinions or what you've been taught by your religious leaders, by your priest, your pastor, your parents, the school you went to, you've been taught who it was written by, but there is still large debate about 
who it was actually written by. Historically, it is not agreed upon according to where you look or where you read or where you study it, okay? What is agreed upon is that the Bible was written by a mixture of human beings, and it was written through a mixture of people who were prophets or claimed to be prophets, and a mixture of people who, who passed down oral stories. So it was written by human beings, who claim to be prophets and who orally pass stories from human to human to human, okay? Where we need to focus here is that nobody is in disagreement, no matter what you were taught or where you learned about the Bible. You cannot really find out there people who do not agree that there were prophets who wrote the Bible, at least in some form, with a mixture of like oral storytelling that was then transcribed, right? But nobody no school of thought out there really disagrees that there were not prophets who contributed to the writing of the Bible. And even if they did disagree, even if you out there listening as a religious person disagree and you say, no, Mary, that's totally incorrect. It was all humans, all oral stories that were then transcribed. There were no prophets who wrote the Bible. That's fine. That's great. That is wholly irrelevant because the Bible is filled with stories of people who claim to be prophets. The Bible is filled with stories of people who claimed to speak to angels, who claimed to speak to God, who were prophets within the stories themselves, okay? Where I'm going with this is that the Bible's filled with stories of prophets. 99% of religious teachers, religious scholars agree that the Bible was written in part by prophets. Yet the Bible states that we are not to commune with channelers, psychics, mediums, which are essentially acting under the guise of prophets. How many prophets are in the Bible? This is where I'm kind of referring here because I'm not an expert on that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, Miriam, some I can't pronounce, Deborah, Gideon, Samuel, King Saul, Nathan, David, King Solomon, um, more I can't pronounce, Elijah, you get the gist. If the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Okay, so what is good for thee is not good for you. Why would that be? The people who wrote these stories, if I as a religious person are reading the Bible, are interpreting these stories, I say that I am placing the parameter of fear around not communicating with spirits and it being evil or bad. Because I'm reading here that people were doing just that. They were channeling. Some of these stories communicating with spirits and they're channeling with God and finding things out about the future. Or in some cases, they were channeling and then engaging in like battles, war, horrible things happened in the Bible. That's something that nobody really wants to speak about, right? <clears throat> it was good for them but it's not good for us to do today. It's considered evil, it's demons, it's Satan. As a religious person, if I were to be a religious person reading the Bible, 
I am framing it out of fear because I am reading this book and I am reading about all of these things, these terrible things that happen to these people. And it scares me. And it puts the fear of God in me. It puts the love of God in me, which is essentially the purpose, right? And I love God so much that I fear, I love God so much that I fear these channelings not being him. I love God so much that I fear these stories. I love God so much that I trust these stories. I love God so much that I read these statements and I fear them. And it all takes me back to fear. But I go back to these authors again. And many of these authors of the Bible were channeling. They were prophets. They were channeling these stories, right? Like that is what we go back to here, that that is not debated. And do you think that they were scared? Because there are so many people today who are experiencing clear audience who are automatic, automatically writing, which would be kind of essentially what was happening, right? Clear audience, automatic writing. Some of them were experiencing clairvoyance. That's what's described in the stories. Do you think that they were scared? Damn right, I bet they were scared. So if they were scared, why do you think that some of these statements ended up in the Bible about fearing channeling, about fearing, what's the word that they called us? Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Okay, channeling is not perfect, you guys. If these people were experiencing things with themselves, channeling, clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, and they were scared because they didn't quite understand what they were experiencing, I can see exactly why these statements would have made it into their writing. I can see exactly why these statements would have made it into the Bible. They probably had no idea what they were creating at the time that they were creating it and what exact what kind of impact it would have on human humanity. And there, that is why I say that if I were a religious person and I were reading these statements, I would very much consider the fact that these authors were themselves prophets. And I would consider what they were feeling and experiencing as they were writing. And if I were convicted and not really sure about what I was reading in the Bible and what maybe myself as a spiritual being were experiencing as a soul with maybe my own loved ones on the other side, and it was not really adding up I would consider maybe if they were experiencing some of the same things that I was experiencing and the fact that channeling is not perfect and it's very possible that some of their own human emotions made it onto the paper. And to remember that they were human too. And that is why I say that as a religious person, I, well, not a religious person, I'm not a religious person. But if I were a religious person, I would say that I feel to answer my client's question, where do you think the religious ideas about not talking to spirit comes from? I don't agree with it, but it came from somewhere. To answer it from the frame of a religious person, my answer would be fear. It came from the Bible. The Bible had authors. Many of the authors were prophets. And if they, if you disagree with that statement, then you need to point to the fact that there were prophets in the Bible, which is sort of hypocritical to then point to the fact that we cannot be prophets today. But I would frame it as fear, 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 fear. Okay. Now, from a non-religious perspective, the Bible is filled with prophets. Okay. The Bible is filled with prophets. And as I was kind of reading through this long list of prophets, just as I was getting ready to film this video, and it is long, you guys, I came across this passage and it's the, uh, Elijah raises the widow's son. Elijah was a prophet in the Bible. Let me just 
scroll down to him for a second. And I don't claim to be an expert on the Bible. I am not. So I'm not claiming to be that. That is why I am referencing here. So if you want to tear me apart on that, you, fine. Elijah was probably the most significant prophet who didn't write his own book. He proclaimed God's word in the northern kingdom of Israel at the time of the evil king Ahab. It was he who ensured a widow was always supply, supplied with oil and flour, and he raised that same widow's son from the dead, who had a showdown with the priests of Baal and Mount Carmel, and who was strengthened by God's still voice in his fatigue and depression. At the end of his life, a chariot of fire took him to heaven, and his mantle fell to Elisha as his successor. So the fact that he raised a widow's son from the dead, that, that jumped out at me. So I decided to look that up, and I just want to read this passage to you guys. Elijah raises the widow's son. It's the first of Kings 1717-24. Elijah raises the widow's son. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill, and his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, what have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourn by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the Lord, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. If you are a non-religious person, I think that you are able to see between the lines here. And this is no judgment to religious people. If you find comfort in religion, that is absolutely your truth and absolutely absolutely wonderful. And I recognize all belief systems and I love that for everybody. Just like I want everybody to love that for me and to respect that and to not be judging me for it. Like I deal with on a daily basis all the time. <laughs> um, but if you are a non-religious person, I think that non-religious people can probably read something like this from the Bible and very much see the hypocrisy in this being included in the Bible and in the judgment of spiritual workers in the modern era. So a Reiki practitioner or an energy worker or a psychic medium will be judged by a religious person and sent messages like this, yet people are being awakened and revived from the dead in the Bible. Dead people are being spoken to in the Bible. God is being channeled in the Bible. And that is totally okay and acceptable. And, but it's not okay for all of us peons. Oops. It's not okay for all of us peons who are alive today. That is why I say for those who are non-religious, I think that to answer the question of where do you think the religious ideas about not talking to spirit comes from i don't agree with it but it came from somewhere i frame it as control and i think of it this way if you were to write you were to teach yourself to write or you were to know how to write let's say you were to teach yourself how to read and write but you were to tell your children, you cannot know how to read and write because it is not good for you. Only I am able to read and write. You will never read and write. And if you read and write, you will be punished, my children. If you were to say that to your sons and daughters, how would that be viewed? And I want you to think about who in history has only allowed themselves to read and write and not allowed others to read and write? Can you think of anyone? And were they punished if 
they were caught trying to teach themselves or others to read and write. We all have souls. We're not just human bodies. So why would the souls in the human bodies who were the prophets, who were living at the time that the Bible was written, the only ones capable of channeling? And then it simply ended. Yet it is included in the religions that came from the Bible, that if anyone does what they did, it is the work of the devil and demons to do what they did, if not for control. You can go even deeper and consider money. You can go even deeper and consider hangings and stonings that have occurred in our past. That's another conversation that could be had. But for now, we'll focus on, you can go back to how this ended up in the Bible to begin with. I'm not saying that some of these statements ended up in the Bible as a means of control. Like I'm not saying that that was the motivation of the people who wrote them. It is very, very possible that the motivation of the people who wrote them was fear, which is why I say if I were a religious person convicted of my feelings of being drawn towards mediumship or being drawn towards working with the other side, I would really think about how those statements ended up in the Bible as being drawn by fear of the people who wrote them. But then if I were a non-religious person, I think it's much easier for us who are non-religious to kind of see through the lines and see what the control is here. And the control would be more so being utilized by the people who kind of were utilizing the Bible for teaching and the people who, what's the word? Try to convict all of us who don't believe the same way that they do as a means of trying to save or under the guise of love, which is really the opposite of love, if you ask me. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, where do you think the religious ideas, what not talking to spirit comes from? I don't agree with it, but it came from somewhere. That, those are my thoughts. I do have additional thoughts on this. Maybe I'll make another video at some point. <laughs> um, until next time, much love. Bye.